In this video, we want to talk about roots of unity and primitive roots of unity in finite fields FQ, where Q is simply the number of elements in our field. Now, if we think about the fact that unity here is just a fancy word for the element 1, then the following definition should make good sense. An element x in FQ is an nth root of unity when x to the n is equal to 1. In other words, when x to the n is equal to unity. And an nth root of unity is a primitive nth root of unity when the order of x is equal to n. In other words, when n is indeed the smallest positive integer to which we can raise x and still get this one. Let's take a look at an example. We'll take the field F7 with these elements raised to these powers. Let's start with the third roots of unity. So we want, in other words, the solutions to this equation. x to the third equals 1. Well, 1 to the third is equal to 1, and 2 to the third looks like is equal to 1, and 4 to the third power is also equal to 1. In other words, we just looked at this third column here and found our 1's. So, 1, 2, and 4 would be the answer. So let's move on to the second roots of unity. x squared is equal to 1 is satisfied by x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 6, right? Just by looking at the second column. So we have here 1 and 6. Now the first root of unity would be 1 alone, right? There's no other 1's in this column. And if we continue in this vein, then the fourth root of unity would be 1 and 6. The fifth root would be just 1. And the six roots of unity would be all non-zero elements. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So at this point, we can already see some patterns emerging. For one, we see that one will always be a root of unity, since one to any power will always be one. That shouldn't surprise us. Another pattern that will always be the case is that we will always find these second roots of unity. Now, it will not always be the case that we can write them as 1 and 6, but if we write them as 1 and negative 1, negative 1 just being another name for 6 in this field, then this will always be the case. In other words, the only square roots of 1 in any field are 1 and negative 1. And one other pattern is if we take a look at the q minus 1th roots of unity, which in this case was 6 since q is equal to 7, then we will always get all non-zero elements. Which means, in other words, that for all x in any field, raised to the q minus first power, we will always get 1. So let's take a look now at these primitive roots. To review the definition of before, we're still looking for 1's, but this time we were just looking for the first 1's that appear in each row. right? So I have this one here, 6 squared is 1. Now 6 to the 4th power is also 1, but since there's a smaller positive integer, namely 2, to which I can raise 6, then I don't need to circle this, this one here. So 5, I'm looking for the first appearance of 1 in this row. That seems to be here. For 4, 4 to the first power is 4, 4 to the second power is 2, 4 to the third power is 1. Okay. 
Again, just always looking for the first appearance of one in each one of these rows. So we'll start again with maybe with the primitive third roots of unity. So we're looking at this column here, the third column, and we see we have identified two elements that, when raised to the third power, give us one, and that cannot be raised to a smaller positive power and still give us one. So that's two and four. We'll move on to the second, the primitive second roots of unity. That looks like that's only going to be six here. And again, if we don't write it as a six, but we write it as a negative one, then that will always be the case. So the primitive first root of unity would be one. And the primitive fourth and fifth roots of unity, we can see, since we don't have any green circles in either one of these columns, that there are none. The primitive six roots of unity, again, we see three and five. So what's so special about these primitive roots of unity? Well, we can see that there are fewer of them, right? Just to take this example, the six roots of unity, we had one, two, three, four, five, and six, and the primitive six roots of unity, we only have three and five. So what's so special about them? Well, these primitive roots of unity generate the rest of these roots of unity. So let's look at that and see an example. Again, we'll start with the third, the primitive third roots of unity. Let's just take one of those. We'll take this four. If I raise four to these different powers, so four to the first power is four, four to the second power is two, four to the third power is one, or the fourth power is four, etc. Here they start repeating. Then I get the elements four, two, and one, which are exactly my third roots of unity. So if I wanted to know the third roots of unity, I could either memorize one, two, and four, or I could just remember that four is a primitive root of unity, and by multiplying itself with itself, by multiplying four with itself, I can produce all of these. We'll take a look at one more example. So primitive six roots of unity. We'll take maybe this three. Three times three gives us two, and three times three times three gives us six, and three times three times three times three gives us four, etc. Then we get five, and then we get one. In other words, three generates for us one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, you might be asking yourself, when can we expect to have primitive roots of uni unity? Because we don't always have them, right? We didn't have any fourth or fifth primitive roots of uh, unity. Well, in this case, we had them for n equals 1, 2, 3, and 6, right? So, if n was any of these numbers, then we had primitive roots of unity. And as it turns out, the reason is because n divides 6, or more generally speaking, because n divides q minus 1. And q minus 1 is just the number of non-zero elements here in our field. We saw q minus 1 once before. So if n divides q minus 1, we will have a primitive root. If n does not divide q minus 1, then we will not have one. So now you know a little more about roots of unity in finite fields and about the primitive roots of unity that one can use to generate the roots of unity.